Hi, it's Tom from Brain Shorts, and today I want to show you how to make a super simple worm tower using a five gallon bucket and lid and two kinds of screen. We're actually going to bury this deeply in our garden, and that's going to help us get our worms through the winter. Stay tuned. Welcome back subscribers. If you haven't joined us yet, you can do so by clicking on the green shorts icon that's going to appear in the bottom right hand corner of the screen throughout the video. In my opinion, the worm tower is one of the simplest to build and easiest to operate worm composting options. Because you don't collect the leachate, it goes right into your garden. The castings as well that the worms are making are going to go out into the bed as well because we're going to create holes, perforations, for the worms to move out of the bucket into the garden, they're gonna come back for the compost. That's their ideal habitat. They don't wanna be in the soil, but they'll go out there, mingle around a little bit, drop off some castings, and then come home and get back to work. I'm using a salvaged bucket and lid for the body of my worm tower, as well as two different kinds of salvaged screen to keep bugs and rodents out. In particular, I'm using metal window screen because generally a rodent isn't gonna chew through metal. I'm also going to use some heavier duty mesh along the lower perforations to keep subterranean rodents from getting in, like moles. Because worms are one of their delicacies, and they'll wipe me out if I let them in. With a worm tower, normally I'm venting the top. For this one, I'm going to vent the side. We're going to bury this into the ground up to about here. But above that, I want to be able to have some air movement in and out so we don't develop an anoxic environment. We need it to be aerobic, meaning it has oxygen, in order for this to work properly and for the worms to be happy. So first we're gonna drill some holes around the top and then cover them with screen. My neighbors have left their dog out back and I can't get it to stop barking. So since we're gonna be hearing the yipping throughout this video, I thought you'd at least like to see the culprit. Come here, what, are you stuck? Now you're gonna go? So I'm going to do a row of holes around the top with my smaller spade bit. It's like about a quarter inch or so. The size isn't as important here. The drill bit actually bubbled out the plastic on the inside. And I'm actually going to leave it like that. That'll discourage the worms from trying to climb out. My top layer here is going to have the fine screen as well as the heavy screen. We'll cut a strip to fit this width and make sure we have enough to go all the way around. Out of both the window screen and the mesh. I'm going to need two at this length to get all the way around. A nice benefit of working with HDPE number two plastic is that it is nice and soft, but it also doesn't contain any BPA. I'm gonna nip off all of the small pointy bits here and then clean up both ends of my two mesh strips. Now we'll secure our screen and mesh to cover the holes. I'm using 3 quarter inch lath screws to do the job. They've got a nice wide flat head that'll help hold the screen and mesh in place. I'm going to start by securing all four pieces at one point. I'm going to overlap them a little bit so two screws will secure everything. Using my clean ends here on the mesh. I don't want to over tighten these screws lest they strip the plastic. Now once I've got all four ends locked down, I'm going to wrap the screen and mesh around and secure it on the other side. Once I know where these are going to overlap, I'm going to trim them off. First the screen and then the mesh.
the self-tapping lath screws are, are really sharp. So I'm actually going to clip the ends with my wire cutters. And also take some length off the screw. I'm going to perforate the bucket 8 inches from the bottom. But before I start drilling holes, I'm going to cut my mesh so I can make sure I'm not drilling holes I can't cover. Uh, for a little overlap. Back to our starting point here, so we've got enough mesh to cover the whole bottom here, eight inches deep. So now we drill. Mark my top here around the bucket in a couple spots just to make sure I don't go over that. And I switch to my wider spade bit. This is 13 sixteenths. The size really isn't as important here. I'm gonna grab some sandpaper and clean this up a little bit. Because I know that this polymer is HDPE number two, I can recycle these scraps with my grocery bags. While I'm doing this, I'm also gonna remove the handle. It's not gonna be needed for this application. Cut this tab right here, slide it out, then I can work it out of the other side. It's actually a nice piece of metal that I can use for something else. Do a little work inside as well, but I gotta keep an eye out for those screws. Now, if you wanna save the mesh step on the bottom, it's really not. 100% necessary. If you notice that you have some mole activity getting into your bucket, then you can come back and add that mesh layer later. So if you want to skip that step, feel free. Now I'm going to screw in the mesh, starting with my diagonal ends. And because this bucket has a taper to it, I'm actually going to start with just one screw. I'll work this around and see where I need to trim it off. And I'll close these off with a second screw. Once I'm sure how the taper is going to affect this, then I can finish off the last two screws here. I'll come back to the other side and lock down this side as well. I've got a situation like this where it's not touching, this is the top screw and adjust. And in a worst case scenario, even if I'm just touching the edge of that hole, it's highly unlikely that a vole or mole is going to find this one hole that they could potentially chew at. So I'm safe here. Alright, our mesh is on. Let's trim the screws. Finally, we'll put on the lid and drill a couple drain holes. Now all we have to do is bury it in the garden. Now once I got the barrel in the level I like it, I'm going to backfill. Currently this bed is actually lower than the final level of the soil, which would come to right about here, which is 
whenever we want it. So to help the worms overwinter, what I'll do is I will bring the soil up to here, but then I'm actually going to cover it with compost and leaves and grass. This insulating layer will help this worm tower stay warmer. The ground heat will come in from the soil. It's going to be warm enough that the worms will be able to live through the winter. To get this worm tower set up with worms and compostables, watch this video. And let me know in the comments below if you've built this. As always, our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green. And save a little green by growing your own fertilizer. Thanks for watching. Please like and share and subscribe for new DIY videos every Friday.